Here he is, Buster, only on 104.5, the team, your home for New York sports, brought to you by Mohawk Army Navy. Buster, it's playoff baseball time. Clayton Kershaw, so dominant during the season, and in the postseason, he now has a 1-5 in five overall postseason record. Is he a choke artist in the postseason? Well, what do you categorize Clayton Kershaw as, Buster? Still the best pitcher on the planet, and for six innings of game one, he was the best pitcher of the planet. For six innings of game two, or excuse me, game four, he was the best pitcher on the planet. And the bottom line is the Cardinals got the better of him. And I, you know, covered that series, and Kershaw in his post game interview sessions was given about a thousand lifelines by reporters trying to give him some reason, excuse. As to why he got hit, they were asking about the Cardinals tipping pitches, or was he tipping pitches the Cardinals? Uh, were they stealing his signs? Uh, all those kinds of things. And Clayton, to his credit, basically said, "You know what? That, that uh, would be disrespectful to the St. Louis hitters. They beat me, and I think they did. I think that in that first game, uh, and I was there. It was 95 to 100 degrees, and I think he hit the seventh inning, and he hit a wall." Uh, in terms of how he was feeling, and he left pitches up in the zone. And then I think in game four, you know, there's a looping hit that went over Hanley Ramirez's glove. Another hit barely got through. And then he hung a curveball. And Matt Adams, to his great credit, took advantage of it. And, and I think it's really just uh, that's what it comes down to. I don't think it's a mental thing. I think that for the most part he pitched great. But I think in the end the Cardinals got the better of him. And here we go again, Buster. St. Louis Cardinals, San Francisco Giants are, are in the NLCS. How are these two teams so good and so successful? Well, I think for both franchise, franchises, stability is such a big thing. With the Cardinals, it's a Cardinal way, and you have Adam Wainwright, who learned from Chris Carpenter before him, who probably learned from Tony La Russa. Uh, you know, they've got the same people in the organization in terms of their player development. When one, when young players are called up, it's not a situation where the veterans are saying, hey, you got to prove it to us. They're basically welcome in, and the veterans say, look, we need you to help us win. And, you know, that's something that I think has really served them well. And I think the same thing is true for the San Francisco Giants, where you have the same general manager, the same manager in Bruce Bochy, the same set of coaches, you know, from Dave Rigetti, their pitching coach, to Tim Flannery, their third base coach. And, and I think they have a great culture. And I think that these guys are kind of like zombies and cockroaches. You just can't kill them, <laughs> uh, these two teams. I mean, they absolutely just you know have a, a strong belief in themselves. I was around the, the Giants leading up to their wild card game against the Pirates, and their feeling was the Pirates are a really good team. And, and over a short series, maybe they wouldn't be able to beat the Pirates, but in one game they were okay. But they were confident that they could beat the Nationals, and they did. And I think that they, both these teams really benefit from their experience. Buster, only on 104.5, the team, your home for New York sports, joins us live at 5.15 every Thursday. Thanks to Mohawk Army Navy. We play it back for you. The best of Buster at 6.30. Buster with aces like Bumgarner and Wainwright facing off in this NLCS. Who has the pitching advantage in this series? I think it depends a lot on what Wainwright is physically. Now, uh, Mike Matheny, the Cardinals manager, just said this afternoon that Adam Wainwright's good to go. He's perfectly fine physically, but we know that that's maybe a little bit of a white lie uh, because going into game four of the NLCS, it was still not in stone that Wainwright was going to be able to pitch if there had been a game five against the Dodgers. You know, he's had some dead arm st- uh, periods this year. And he's not saying exactly what the issue is. You know, it'd be an educated guess to say maybe it's an elbow thing. But if he's okay, then I think the Cardinals have an advantage. You know, if you know, they they're certainly capable to be behind him with Lance Lynn and with John Lackey. Shelby Miller pitched well in his appearance against the Dodgers, um, and I. I think they have better overall depth than the Giants do uh, in, in terms of their pitching staff as well when you look at the Cardinals' options out of their bullpen. Buster, we got the Royals getting here, and it's kind of a shock. Are they going to fall into that trap of being like, hey, we're just happy to be here? We heard stories about Hosmer out there buying bar tabs. Is that trap real for them? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, you know, I think that it's going to be a greater challenge for them against the Orioles 
because we saw in the first two rounds, if you include the wild card game and then the division series, they were so aggressive. And in fact, I think the number is that the Royals to this point in the postseason have stolen 12 bases, and every other team in the postseason has combined for 11. Uh, they had seven in that one game against Oakland. That's not going to happen against the Orioles for several reasons. One, uh, Chris Tillman, who's going to start for the Orioles. Think about these numbers. The last two years, opposing runners have tried to steal 13 bases against him. They've been successful twice. That's two out of 13 because he's so quick to the plate. Uh, Caleb Joseph, who's going to do some catching in the series for the Orioles, he's got a rocket arm, and you know that Buck Showalter is going to game plan against the Royals. I think that's going to make it more difficult for them to have that part of their game. But these are really two well-matched teams because they're both really good defensively and they both have great bullpens. I'm picking the Orioles in this series, but I think it's absolutely reasonable to think that maybe the Royals could win, especially if Hosmer keeps hitting for power. And Orioles is a team you've been kind of on for a while now, right? Yeah, I, I, and I I totally defer to the other players I was hearing from in the division in April and in May. You know, you talk to the Red Sox players, you talk to the Yankee players, and they'd go, well, the Orioles are the best team in the division, uh, is, is what they were telling me privately, because they love the talent they have there. Buster Olney on 104.5, the team brought to you by Mohawk Army Navy, Capital Area's largest selection of boots and safety shoes since 1985. Buster, uh, in regards to Bryce Harper, we all talk about how great Mike Trout is. Is Bryce Harper close to that level? Because, gosh, he's fun to watch, man. Yeah, he is. And we saw in that series against the Giants how he's just not afraid of anything. And he loves the moment. And he's been on the stage basically, it seems like, his whole life. Uh, we started hearing about this kid when he was 13, 14 years old. Uh, you know, I, do, I don't put him close to that Trout level yet because Trout's actually done it. Bryce has had some injuries. He's had some inconsistency. Uh, and I, you know, I hope it, the one thing I think that separates Trout in the way that it did Derek Jeter through a lot of his career is that he just seemed to have fun and in everything that he did and none of the other stuff got in the way. It always seems like that... You know, for for Bryce and maybe just being a young player who's sort of learning how to handle things, there's always seems to be some some small issue coming up, and I and I I really hope that he sets all that aside because he is a fun guy to watch, and when he gets uh, you know invested in everything, man, he, he he plays hard, and he has such a high impact. Uh, we uh, we see that the Orioles have locked up J.J. Hardy for an extension. Where does that leave the uh, New York franchises in their search for shortstops? Well, it certainly takes probably what was going to be the number one option off the board for the teams needing a shortstop, the, the Mets, the Yankees, the Dodgers, uh, and I'm sure that's why the Orioles saw this. I know that manager Buck Showalter loves J.J. Hardy and has always talked about you know how important Hardy is to what the Orioles do. Uh, and you know, he's such a consistent force on that team. And he, I know that Buck behind the scenes have been working like crazy to get these two sides together. Uh, when I talked to J.J. about his contract uh, at the beginning of the year, he had no indication there was going to be traction, but I bet you this, the looming specter of seeing J.J. in a Yankee uniform or maybe a Dodger uniform probably pushed the Orioles. Buster, only 104.5 the team. Uh, Josh Beckett calls it quits. Uh, Buster, Hall of Famer? No. He's not a Hall of Famer, but what a career. Uh, and set aside you know, the, all the, the chicken and beer stuff, which some people are going to remember him for, I'll always remember him for being the guy who goes into Yankee Stadium on three days rest in the 2003 World Series and absolutely shuts that team down, um, you know, a team that had won champion, a lot of championships leading up to that, or you know, the work that he did with the Red Sox. He's had a tremendous career. He's Buster Only, brought to you by Mohawk Army Navy. Three great locations, Niskayuna, Latham, and Saratoga, or visit them online, MohawkArmyNavy.com, your work wear headquarters. LeVac, I got my kayak there. You've got some work jeans there as well. It's a great place to go. Dude, I love it, man. When, I'm, when, I'm, when I want to do dude stuff, whether it be camping or, or whatever, I go there, and like when my friends pick on me for not having like manly stuff, I yeah. just, I go and tell them. I'm like, I got teased for this. They're like, come here. We got you. This is where being a dude is awesome. Speaking of awesome dudes, Buster only. Dude, thanks for your time today. I just said dude in 30 seconds. I apologize, Buster. And uh, Buster, we'll talk to you uh, next Thursday, 515 on the team. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Enjoy the playoffs. Okay. Take care, guys.